And this is where either a dog becomes very fearful or they become very, very violent in their reaction to things. I m once met a couple who adopted a chocolate lab. He was a little older. I think he was past the age of four. But he was he liked me. He liked the food that I would feed him for just, you know, sitting in front of my presence. But he would get so excited so quickly, within seconds, that he was he would turn into like Cujo. And he would be foaming at the mouth trying to go after me. This is what happens when people don't channel that excitement into something conducive. It turns into this instant, over-the-top, overreactive behavior that becomes very violent. Because they have no way of derailing themselves. And no one taught that dog to do so. So the poor owners have had to take some extreme measures to try to train this dog to be normal. And this was because people didn't actually train their dog. They just left him in the backyard and let him get high on his own hormones all day long, all the time, with no checks. Absolutely no checks whatsoever. And those are the worst dogs. That's why I think backyards are kind of like a crutch for people. All right? So, aggression. Whenever the excitement is not channeled somewhere, it's going to... That's what's going to happen. That's where it goes. The dog has no place to put it. They have no cognitive ability to say, I better calm down and just sit down for a second. That's something you have to teach them. All right. When it comes to actual behaviors, when it comes to the dogs meeting each other, for instance, first of all, I don't think it's a good idea to have dogs meet on leash anyway because it's very easy for them to have a little tension on that leash around their neck and then they think they got bitten by the other dog that they're looking at right now. Second, when you do have dogs meet, make sure that you're meeting the dogs with them. You should be the alpha, so you shouldn't be sending the dogs forward towards each other like Braveheart, like they're going to war. That's not their job. It's your job to go forward and go with them and meet the other dog at the same time and just disperse the energy. Let each dog know that you're in control of the situation, that you're right there on top of it so that there's no misunderstandings. Third, you need to look for little head turns and avoidances by one or the other dogs and respect it. Don't just assume that the dogs will eventually like each other. They may never like each other. They may never feel comfortable. It's to play. It's not The end goal is not to play, people. The end goal is to not hurt each other. So if the dogs are like turning their heads at 15 to 20 degrees or 90 degrees, split them away, walk them away, see a heel, go away. Do not force dogs to actually eventually become best playmates. Fourth, going on that same tone, that same concept of play, you do not have to have two dogs at home or, or you know your dog and your neighbor's dog be playmates. If they can be in the same room together and just chill out and not worry about who's moving where and who's getting the water and who's doing that, you have a very good thing. That is the goal, is relaxation around other dogs. Not 100% excitement and play. So, Otherwise, that's actually aggression. They're constantly competing, dominate, constantly battling each other. And yes, it's in a playful way, but someday it may not be. Someday, because you're not putting it in check, you're not managing the energy in the room or the energy between the two dogs, you're going to have a, a battle. And this is where people call me and say, they've been best friends for two years and I don't know what happened. Well, what happened was is that you just assumed that all interaction was okay because they were constantly battling at each other. And that's not really good. We actually want them to learn to settle down and be calm around each other most of the time. Once in a while they play but not all the time and not over everything and not be overly aware of who's moving where when and who's being close to who when and all that stuff. Competition, that is dominance and that is not monitor. It's your job to monitor and that creates aggression, okay, and anxiety. So I, you know, I, I got to I gotta just pound this into your head. Aggression is not about the intent. It's about competition, it's about dominance, it's about insecurity. And how they handle it, a little aggression's okay. Stepping into a dog's space when another dog's acting out is okay. That's an aggressive mood, but they're not actually making contact, and they're not going over the top. What we want to do is make sure that our dogs don't go over the top. So if you have been in the habit, you have been in the habit of actually saying that your dog is friendly all the time when they're off leash or they're out in front of you, you are a problem. You are a total shubster. 
And I'm just lay it out flat because you're the reason why I have a career, which is not too bad for me, but it's pretty sad for everybody else. Having dogs just running out because there's never been blood before. Or here's my favorite one. Somebody who's irresponsible enough to have their dog running up to other dogs on leash or off, and then the one day that a dog finally says, I'm not going to take it, and actually bites your dog that's running up to them, and all of a sudden, he's a friendly dog, this has never happened before, your dog's a problem. No, 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 you have an asshole who got lucky all this time. That's it. And you should have been the one toning it down. So, you know, that's why I use prong collars for a lot of these overexcited dogs. We actually have to bite them in the neck before somebody else does, and that will be bloody. If we do it, it'll be much more you know, serene and humane than if another dog decides to take your dog out because your dog's an a-hole. And that's your fault, Shubster. So, aggression. Aggression is not about intent. Aggression is about behavior. And it comes from overexcitement or anxiety that is improperly channeled. And it's your job, your job, to learn how to channel that to something conducive. Alright? So, I want you to be very wary. Don't just pay attention to your dog, by the way. Maybe your dog's not a big deal. But I guarantee you most of the dogs you walk by, almost all of them, are aggressive. And people refuse to do this. I have an example this morning. I had a bulldog on a walk today. Wanted to turn a corner, but this woman with like a, a poodle shih tzu mix was like walking by. And the dog got all you know, uppity uppity because, you know, I have a bulldog who's like big and so he decided to be all Mr. Dominant and he stops to pee on a rock to mark his territory in front of the bulldog. And of course, the shubster owner went ahead, because you know, the dog's the boss, you know, it's not her walk, it's his walk apparently. And the dog kept peeing and he kept spinning around the rock and peeing and spinning around and started growling and growling and I was like, so I very passively aggressively said, you know, dude, hold it together leave. I know he's getting even more aggressive right now because he thinks he's all that. And, you know, she just keeps letting him pee and keeps letting him mark and keeps trying to make the point and he's not making him happy enough so he's going to get all wound up and eventually the crazy bitch left. So, here's the thing. You have got to watch out for your dog's behavior and other dogs' behaviors. I knew that the, while that dog was getting wound up and wound up and we were kind of trapped in that situation, the dog I was handling, the bulldog, was going to get wound up. And so I had to keep him in check, channeling his energy into something conducive to a sit-stay and keep his eyes off the crazy one. And then I used my passive-aggressive behaviors to try to, he's a freaking idiot, and she needs to move on. The dog doesn't really need to pee six times on a rock and start growling while he's peeing. It's really not necessary. It's not part of the deal. So, um, you know, whatever. I just really want it to be clear. You've got to watch out for everybody else's behavior because it's going to affect your dog. And you've got to let your dog know, hey, I got this dog. I got it. And that's what I do all day long with the dogs I work with. I got this. I got it. It's not your job. I got it. I see that asshole. I got it. Right. And meanwhile, everybody else is going, my dog's friendly. Um, whatever. Whatever you want to believe, sister. That's not the truth. Your dog, if they were friendly, would be at your side and be relaxed about seeing another dog and not pulling out in front and growling and spazzing out. That's aggressive. So, pay attention to that. Reassure your dog if you're trying to channel their energy as they're, like, freaking out with other dogs. <sighs> I tell you. I mean, I do have a career because of this, but really, there'd be a lot less damage psychologically and physically among dogs if uh, people would actually take responsibility for the behavior and understand that aggression is not about intent, it's not about negativity, it's about behavior, and it's not being channeled properly. All right, I'm done being a jerk right now, but, well, give me 20 minutes, I'll be ready to be a jerk again, but you don't have to listen to it. So... Watch out for your dogs. Watch out for other dogs and start really taking a stance on protecting your dog and channeling the energy into something conducive for the pack, like heal or stay, and not assume that friendliness has anything to do with it because it's wrong. All right, here we go. You know what I say? To love is to, is to serve. To love, what? I can't speak English today. To, 
<laughs> You'd think I'd be drinking or something. In the dog world, to love is to serve. So give your dogs little ways every day to serve you, and in return, you will have served them well. I will be talking to you all next week and probably a little more clearly. Bye. I just want a good hand.